I'll tell you a little bit about the MyCatha itself then, a bit about its versatility, and then I'll finish with a, a case just to illustrate some of its uh, usefulness. So the Recross is a dual lumen double hub over the wire microcatheter you can see here. So there's a white hub which has um, a channel that takes you to the tip of the microcatheter and also has an exit port 12 millimeters back from the tip of the microcatheter. And then you have a blue hub that has a stilet. And when the stilet is removed, there's a channel that takes you down to a side port that's eight millimeters back from the tip. So you have three exit ports, one at the tip and one on either side of the microcatheter. And the advantage of that is it gives you 360 degrees access to the vessel. When we look at the crossing profile of the device, one of the advantages is that it's ovoid in shape. And you can see on this illustration on the right that this means that in a six French guiding catheter, you have enough space in there to be able to trap it in and trap it out. In terms of its ability to cross, there's really three aspects to the device that help its um, ability to cross resistant lesions and channels. So there's the stilet in the blue hub, which improves support. As uh, Roberto discussed before, there's braiding around the blue port. And lastly, there's this core wire technology, um, which allows you to, to get improved crossability and pushability with the device. Now, this is particularly important in the CTO setting, where it's, I'll, I'll explain as we go forward, some of its versatility in those types of cases. But one of the limitations of anti-grade re-entry is the crossability with the Stingray device. And you can see here that the recross without the stilet and with the stilet is two to three times more um, pushable and crossable in calcific difficult CTOs than the, the Stingray. And that's one of the situations in which I found it particularly useful. So let's talk about its versatility. So you can use it simply as an anti-grade single access microcatheter just to support anti-grade wiring like any other microcatheter. And I've used it certainly in that situation. And one of the beauties in CTO is you can use it uh, you know, with two or three of its versatile um, mechanisms. And then obviously that's efficient from a cost point of view uh, during your cases. You can use it to support proximal cat penetration if you've got a side branch, just like any other dual lumen microcatheter. So you can place a workhorse, a workhorse wire in your side branch, take the microcatheter in, and then that fixes the microcatheter in place and allows you to increase your penetration force across the proximal cap in models up to five times. One of the big advantages of the recross is this uh, ability to use it as a kind of advanced standard grade dual lumen um, microcatheter. And you can use it, I suppose, there's, this technique has been described both as wire redirection and parallel wiring, depending on how you're performing it and in what setting. But essentially, when you take your first wire and the wire doesn't go exactly where you want it to be, maybe in an adverse area within the plaque that's calcified or into the cementable space, you can take the recross on that wire and then use one or other of the two side ports to redirect your wire to cross uh, the occlusion. One of the situations in which I've used it now many times um, with good effect is this technique, which has both been described as subintimal guide wire redirection or anti-guide wiring and re-entry. And I'll explain that now. So if you've entered the subintimal space, and you're beyond the distal cap, so you're in a situation in which you're thinking you're going to try and re-enter the true lumen beyond your occlusion or beyond your lesion. If you follow your wire with the recross so that both side ports are beyond the distal cap, then it gives you the ability to try and re-enter the lumen um, from one or other of the side ports. So what you're going to do is take the device beyond the distal cap, give yourself a retrograde injection, which will then help me identify which port you want to X out of to re-enter and I'll show you uh, that in a bit more detail as we go forward through the presentation. If we look at that in cross section you can see what's happening here so in the image on the right hand side you see the true lumen with the recross sitting in the subintimal space. If you've given a retrograde injection it's going to show you that this port that you see on the right is the one that you want to exit to re-enter into the true lumen and you'll see that in a case I'm about to show you. Lastly, one of the other um, situations in which I've had used it to great effect is this, this technique of subintimal hematoma decompression. So you've delivered the recross into the subintimal space. 
Whenever you enter the syrintima, you'll start to accumulate hematoma. The hematoma swells, it compresses your true lumen, reduces your visibility, and makes re-entry difficult. So what you can do is on whichever hub you've got your wire in, on the other hub, if you attach a 10 mil syringe and you aspirate and put the syringe on lock or negative, you can decompress the hematoma, allowing your true lumen to expand. And the beauty of this device is you can do that simultaneously while you also try and puncture through, which isn't possible, for example, with the Stingray device. And again, I'll show you that in the case. Two other things just to mention. One is obviously it gives you the possibility if you wanted to do a distal contrast injection, which can be appropriate occasionally. And the other thing is in the non-CTO setting, you can use it just for side branch entry if it's difficult to access the side branch. And in CTO, you can also use it to access difficult to access collaterals, for instance, difficult septals of the LED or the RPDA. So I'll go on and show you a case where you'll see some of that versatility used. So this was a 63 year old man who had a bypass 15 years ago in South Africa. All his vein grafts are known to be blocked. He's still got his lima. Came back with a refractory angina and he attended in January, just pre-COVID, for CTO PCI to his right coronary artery. So these are his angiograms. So what you can see is a post-bypass secluded right coronary artery. You'll see it's quite a complex CTO. There appears to be filling from the septals from the LED, which is then occluded and supplied by the lima. You can see the proximal cap is very proximal, almost at the osteum. And there appears to be some antegrade filling, probably through some kind of ipsilateral bridging collaterals. And here's the straight REO, so you see that septal that goes down and fills uh, the distal right. So if we look at the characteristics of the CTO, it's essentially an osteo right coronary. There's some ambiguity about the proximal cap, it's long. The distal cap's a bit ambiguous as well. There's disease in the distal landing zone. We can see some angiographic calcium, at least mild. There's undoubtedly some ambiguity and probably tortuosity of the vessel course. And we've got some um, collaterals that are possibly use usable for retrograde access. So high complexity with the scoring systems. And my strategy in this case was to do a primary retrograde through that septal. And then if that didn't work, switch um, expecting to have to use antegrade re-entry because of the ambiguity and long course of the occlusion. So I started retrogradely. I've got a, a Corsair Pro 150 and using both the Scion and the Sulo 3 we cross quite quickly but it's, it's actually very difficult to get the microcatheter to follow and in fact with it across it became with this being a single dominant um, retrograde collateral it became very ischemic. So what I decided to do was to leave the retrograde wire as a marker. You can see that the wire is starting to show me the course of the vessel and there's a lot of tortuosity in that mid to distal right. One of the interesting things here, which is just a general learning point, is that with the microcatheter in the septal, we start to see more antegrade visualisation from the ipsilateral collaterals. You can see that in the angiogram on the right hand side. So the idea of switching collaterals on and off. So I start to work antegradely. It's actually very difficult to get across the proximal cap. There's no, not really any space to work with the usual types of techniques. We've got a Corsair 135. Eventually I managed to get a Gladius into that. You can see that in the angiogram on the left, but I can't get the microcatheter to get any purchase. So I take a small balloon. I managed to just get that into the cap. Um, and with that inflated, I'm able to push the Gladius and create a, a, a knuckle. I then managed to get the microcatheter across and we switched for a fresh knuckle wire. We've got an XT here and I push the XT forward, tracking that long kind of ambiguous course with safety and not risking um, wire exit. And you'll see in the angiogram on the right, we start to really elucidate um, the complexity of the anatomy at the bottom of the vessel with this very retroflex bend. So now what I'm going to do is switch to the dissection re-entry with the conventional Stingray device. I've got a Miracle 12, the Stingray balloons track distally and I use a Hornet 14 and Gladius for a stick and swap and I manage to enter um, the distal true lumen. I perform IVIS and I'll just show you the start of this run. If you watch closely, we're luminal here, but we very quickly become subintimal and I felt that uh, there was a subintimal. You'll see the, the vessel comes in on the left-hand side between six and 12 o'clock just here. 
And I felt I was subintimal across that distal bifurcation in the right cornea artery. So this is the situation that I find myself in. So I've re-entered probably at or just beyond the bifurcation. And I don't want to stand here because if I push that subintimal tissue across, I'm going to lose the PLV. So I decided to, to quickly try and stick across using a dual lumen microcatheter. That's unsuccessful. It's been a long procedure. So at this point, I decide I'm going to do balloon dilatation uh, as an investment and I'm going to bring them back in stage completion to make sure I can secure the bifurcation. So there's obviously some delay with COVID. So it comes back recently and I decide to start single access just to see how the vessel looks and see how I've modified it. And you can see here that it's modified a lot. What we can see is that there's much more antiquated filling. You see this big complexity of bridging collaterals, but we can actually see the, the target is much more proximal than we would have um, we would have accessed if we continued in the first case. So in the investment procedure, we've increased antiquated filling. The bridging collaterals are much more obvious. I know I have a subintimal track in that vessel all the way down to the bifurcation, but I can't see it. And what we can see the vessel beyond the distal clamp much more clearly than we could during the first case. So I decide this time I'm going to try and complete this antiquately and I'm going to try and use this subintimal guide wire redirection or antiquated rewiring and re-entry technique. And if that doesn't work, I'll try again with the stingray. So I've got a Corsair 135 and the Scion wire goes straight into the subintimal space. I switch to Gladius, which I track safely to beyond the distal cap. You see on the right hand side, it's in the subintima beyond the distal cap. And this is an illustration of this uh, technique. So I've followed the Gladius with the recross device. I've tracked it beyond the distal cap. And now what I'm gonna try and do is re-enter using the recross device. So you see the recross device here on the left, sitting just beyond the distal cap. I've taken a guy a third wire, which I'm now tracking through the blue channel. So the first wire is through the white channel. So I've got the gladius, the Gaia third through the blue channel, and it's exiting eight millimeters back from the tip. And then the pit diagram on the right, that looks pretty good. But of course, always checking a contralateral view. And you can see in the area that I'm still subintimal. So what I do here is this straw and stick technique. So you can see on the right hand side, I've got my penetration wire now through the white hub and I've got a syringe with um, my artery forceps allowing the syringe to sit on suction on the blue hub. So that's de actively decompressing the hematoma while I'm going to try and re-enter with the wire. So you see this in the illustration here. So now what I've, I've got is I've got a CP12 through the white hub and I'm gonna try and re-enter through the, the side port 12 millimeters back from the, the tip while aspirating through the blue hub. And you see that works beautifully and the CP12 slides forward into the vessel. I'm obviously going to check that. And you can see it's nice. So um, I was, of course, and um, I'll not labour on this, but basically just to confirm that I'm definitely luminal. And I can see actually on the IVUS, uh, when I study it closely, all the, the modification we did during the first procedure. So we proceed on to conventional stenting. And you can see this funny appearance down in the distal vessels. So I was this again. And basically what I can see, I won't show you the Ivis run, but basically what I can see is there's a lot of disruption down there from the first, the first attempt to re-enter. So I extend my stenting down to make sure I'm going to secure the bifurcation. And we end up with this nice end result. So in conclusion, I think the recross device is a fantastic addition to the CTO toolbox. Um, I've now used it um, quite extensively in multiple situations. I really like the ability to perform the re-entry technique in quite a controlled manner. I think its ability to track through calcified torches vessels is a big advantage over the other re-entry devices. Um, and I think this ability to decompress your hematoma while trying to re-enter is also a really nice, uh, elegant technique. Thanks very much.